everyone welcome back to storytelling by data my name is lekna and in today's video we will be covering what exactly does a data analyst do on a day to day basis before we get started do hit the subscribe button and like this video and share it so it could help someone transition to data and in this channel we talk all about career in data career and productivity so with that let's dive right in today's video i will be covering about what exactly and what actually does a data analyst do on a day to day basis this is not your typical day day in a life video but we will be getting into depths of what exactly we do in a day these are some of the common data analyst responsibilities so what does a data analyst actually do on a day to day basis so this is exactly the step by step of what exactly we do on a regular basis and first is to understand the stakeholder requirements and then we will be diving into defining the problem statement and then we collect the data and then do the data cleaning and with that we produce the reports or dashboards and present the findings with that let's jump into the first one understanding the requirements so when you say understanding the requirements what we are doing here is depending on the type of requirements that we get it could be from sales marketing crm or just the business or sometimes even the clients uh clients would require to see some things so these are some of the requirements understanding that you're doing with with the stakeholders and here the important step or i would like you i would like to take your attention to is asking the right questions why is this important it's because if you don't ask the right questions at the beginning of understanding the business and understanding the problem statement you might miss out a couple of things and try, might un, you know misinterpret the data or the information so asking the right questions here is very important and then the third thing is to understand what exactly the stakeholders need so it could be the what is the end result uh, what are they trying to get to if they're trying to understand why the sales was uh, gone down in the month of december uh, then you want to understand uh, what kind of end results are they looking at are they looking at the automatic reports or are they do they want it on a weekly basis do they want it on a daily basis or is it some sort of dashboard that they're looking for so understanding the end goal and then coming to the bits and pieces of uh, asking the right questions is key the next the next step is uh, defining the problem statement in the problem statement what you're trying to understand or you're trying to explain to the stakeholders this is an exercise that you do to understand the problem better so always ask uh, the stakeholders to like explain it to them explain the problem statement to them so that you're sure that you have understood the problem statement well and then uh, creating a rough copy of the dashboard here you create the draft copy of the dashboard or just put it on, on on an excel sheet and say that this is what you're trying to measure and this is what you're trying to get to and then once they they are like oh this looks great this, this is exactly what they want then get the confirmation either on an email or uh, just a place where you know they have confirmed that you know you, your your designs look good your visuals look good or your your idea of uh, of it looks good and then create a plan and a timeline come up with a plan and a timeline to when you're going to execute this usually a dashboard building a dashboard depending on how proficient you are takes about a, a week or two once you have all your data so create that plan and timeline uh, for yourself and also for the team and then communicate with the stakeholder saying that this is the first iteration and this is how when the final product will be done and then once you have done the initial part of planning preparation and all that 
Now you collect the data. Here, what we're doing is collecting the data from multiple sources. Now that you have the problem statement and everything defined, you are going to collect data from multiple sources. Depending on how the organization is structured, uh, you might have different types of different, different various sources of data. Uh, so start collecting them. Sometimes you might even need external data for some sort of uh, analysis. So web scraping, that's where all your Python skills comes into picture. And then create an ETL process uh, for getting this data. Depending on how big or small your organization is, uh, you might need to create an ETL process. If it's a, if it's a big company, a big organization, you might you might have everything ready, but for a smaller organizations, you might want to create processes on your own so that you don't have to do it manually every time you want to collect the data. And then we dive into uh, data cleaning. This is where I think most data analysts spend a lot of time on and it's going to take time to clean data because depending on the size of the data, you might make, take longer time. So here, identifying what data points uh, solves the problem is very important. Again, here it goes back to the problem statement and all that. Uh, so you want to understand what exactly are the data points that are needed to solve the problem. And here you spend most of your time removing any errors, duplicates, wrong formats, and uh, also some, you know, if, if you're looking into some plain text kind of field, you might want to eliminate that because that is not going to give you uh, any sort of uh, analysis. So any plain text field, because that that's just, you know, the business would have written on it. Uh, so trying to remove all such kind of uh, things. And then you have to bring structure in the data based on your problem understanding. You're bringing that structure into data and cleaning everything up, making it pretty, looking pretty and tidy and removing unwanted data points. So that's the whole goal of data cleaning. And then you jump into uh, producing reports or dashboards. Now, once you have everything set, uh, especially when you're creating a dashboard, uh, it it is the the major part of it is going to be in the data. So once your data is ready, dashboards are pretty easy to make. Visualizations take much lesser time compared to actually cleaning the da uh, the data. So and reports again, it depends on what kind of end result the stakeholder is looking at. So if it's if it's a report that goes out daily, you have to set it based on that. So, so here, the, the deeper understanding of problem uh, statement is where you are actually uh, producing the reports and insights and uh, analysis for that particular dashboard order. And now, once you have understood this, so this is exactly what a data analyst does on a day-to-day -day basis. So each day you're maybe spending on uh, just anal analysis, like SQL, SQL, trying to understand or trying to clean up the SQL data, data sets and things like that. So the next day it's going to be, uh, could be just, you know, again, data cleaning. So the next day could be just Power BI or uh, you're doing some visualizations or just building reports. So uh, based on your pro like the project plan, you will be spending the day based on that. Sometimes you might have to go back with the business regarding some of the understandings that, you know, the pro understanding of the problem state, depending on the type or, or the timeline that you put, uh, each day is going to be different. So now let's understand what are the skills and job duties of a data analyst. So these are the, like, the basic qualifications of a data analyst um, where they, you need to have at least a moderate amount of math and stat skills. And then you need to have a strong business acumen. With that, you need to have moderate coding skills. Like I mentioned, uh, you don't have to learn Python or R, you know, as much as a data scientist, but you need to have a little bit of coding skills. 
then developing the key performance indicators. These are something that comes with having a strong business acumen. If you are in a retail industry, you know what exactly are the different indicators of how the business is performing. So having that business acumen is very important, um, especially if you're coming from a non-technical background, uh, you might want to consider and see where you, where, what is your strength? Do you understand the business pretty well? Then you are a good fit to transition into data analytics. And then uh, comes creating visualizations. So this is a skill that you can learn quickly. Uh, you can just start off with Power BI or Tableau and you can you know, uh, start working on your visualization skills. And then uh, again, goes back to utilizing business intelligence and analytical tools. Uh, the visualizations uh, dashboards are Power BI like and Tableau are one of the good ways to start. And now let's get into the tools that we daily use. Uh, so on a day-to-day -day basis as a data analyst, you're gonna be using a lot of Excel, that is for sure, and a lot of SQL too. And then you bring on the company, the type of uh, tools that you use. Uh, SAS is another uh, software that, that is used and uh, AWS and Azure, again, cloud platforms uh, are extensively used these days for uh, a data analyst. And uh, the must is a, a visualization tool. This could be different for different organizations, but standard are Tableau or Power BI. With that, I hope this video helped you and uh, give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel for more content on uh, career in data and 